Hello everybody, I'm trying to remember the last time I saw so many people in three dimensions. This is a, a wonderful feeling to be back here again. And also a lovely excuse to not take the hoodie out of the cupboard for the first time in about two and a half years. Um, we're going to change gears slightly today and talk a bit about the impact of both open source, but also open collaboration and open API ecosystems within the finance industry, taking a NatWest view of what we've done, what we've learned, what's gone wrong, what has benefited us with, and ultimately where we're planning on going next. And hopefully bringing to life some of the framework, some of the contributions, uh, some of the work that individuals in this team, in this uh, room, and your companies have been helping to put forward. So I lead enterprise engineering, as was said, for NatWest. We've been on a journey over the last three or four years off the back of open banking to really start to open up an organization that's been a very traditional bricks and mortar finance company here in the UK for hundreds of years now. We are a complex entity, but I'm going to start with a bit of a history lesson for those of you who aren't intimately familiar with the world of open banking and open finance. Um, 2016 and beyond, or before that, um, I think we had a degree of connectivity across our ecosystem, across our uh, companies and industry, but it was largely individual value chains. We were partying with individual people on the other end of a contract, opening up services and APIs for a particular purpose. Open banking came along and forced through the CMA a regulatory change in that scene. And in 2018, in January, that came into effect with about 60 participants in the ecosystem, forcing location data, ATM data, transaction data, uh, payments data out into the public for the first time. In an organization, in an operation, we suddenly challenged a bank's traditional way of protecting its market segment and serving its customers. I'm really proud to say that at NatWest, we went beyond that regulation quite early and took it as an opportunity to treat this as a differentiator for us in the industry. And we've now taken a very conscious tilt towards an open ecosystem model within the organization. And we'll talk a bit more about that in a second. Coming up very soon, being discussed actively at tables in different rooms right now is open finance, an opportunity to move well beyond the original intent of pure payments and transaction data and into a world of mortgages, savings accounts, insurance, pensions, really making sure that as an industry, we can break down some of those barriers and walls, new competition and new innovation for our customers and our peers. What's been really critical in this journey is recognizing, very similar to the shift in open source, that actually we as an organization don't always have the best ideas sitting within our brick walls. We don't have the best technologies. We don't necessarily have the best technologists. We have some fantastic ones, but actually this is about opening up and embracing the pace of the ecosystem, both within the open source collaborations, but also the open ecosystem and API ones as well. It's been a difficult lesson for us to learn, if I'm honest, taking a many hundred year old institution and bankers who are used to dealing with bricks and mortars and branches and try and teach them that actually the products they're now selling, in a lot of cases, are pure technology things they can't see and touch. The competitors who have spent many years challenging and fighting against are actually in many cases now their collaborators and their partners in these endeavors. And their customers who they've been used to coming to them for products when they need them, walking into the front door of their branch, actually now have a very different expectation of how they should be engaging with a financial services company and a product. It's forced us into a model of accepting actually that things like sanctions screening, something that we do internally, is now a valuable product for an industry beyond our walls. The fintechs aren't necessarily here to eat our lunch every time, but actually are huge opportunities for us to engage and connect with our customers in different ways. And our competitors, in a lot of cases, with FDC3 as a great example, are now an opportunity for us to join together and really help solve some of our internal business problems as well as our consumer problems in an open marketplace. There's a lot of fantastic quotes and talks about ecosystem models and I'm not gonna go through them, but I think the key lesson we've learned is that the better the ecosystem we're in does, the better that we do as a participant of it. And really trying to encourage that collaboration in every aspect has been a key culture form for us. And I'm certainly not gonna claim that we're at the end of that journey. Key for us, uh, and I seem to have missing text on my slides as well, so we'll see how well this goes for the rest of them, um, has really been focusing on five key sort of culture tipping drivers across the organization that play both in our open source mindset and our ecosystem mindset. We're talking about product over projects, a very common taxonomy, I'm sure we're all very familiar with it, but asking teams not to abandon and forget about technology, code, and services and APIs once they're done with that particular investment but actually to feed and water, hydrate them, and ultimately turn them off if they're not being needed or used anymore. Ooh. We're forcing our teams to think externally. So every single API or service that comes through any of our design boards that's classified as a business service 
is now required to be publicized on our bankofapis.com portal. I'll throw a link up to it at the end, but you can see it publicly. So everything we do, whether it's check imaging, if you take a picture of a check and you cash it, is now a publicly available API that anyone can use in the ecosystem beyond our bank. Most importantly for me is expecting unseen reuse. And I think this goes in a lot of our open source contributions as well. Getting beyond the model that we can predict what something's going to be used for and writing it for some use cases and securing it for use cases well beyond its original intent. Over the last period, we've seen 57 distinct examples, and we'll talk about some of them in a minute, of unexpected reuse of the services and APIs in our ecosystem, each of which has either led to additional revenue that we weren't expecting to gain, additional cost avoidance and a better time to market because suddenly somebody hasn't to had to develop a big complex thing, or a cost reduction and an ability to scale a proposition significantly without the cost rising in line with it. We've got a deploy once mindset, which if I'm honest is one of the most painful things for me in an organization of 10,000 technologists, is to convince people to reach over the fence and have a conversation with those in the room next to them, to find a way to bring up and collaborate on a product that almost meets your needs, rather than build something yourself again that absolutely meets your needs, is a real culture twist across our technologists and our contributors that continues to be a focus for us. And if anyone's solved it, by the way, Come and grab me later and tell me how, because I'll, I'll happily buy you a glass of wine later for that one. Um, and lastly, be open. Uh, you know, again, mindset shift, but accepting that the teams don't always have the best ideas in them, being open to the ecosystem, both within our organization and outside, and actively taking part in those communities that enrich uh, our knowledge, our approaches, but also that our customers rely on and, and are supported by. I'm going to talk about five key examples of those. Out of the 57, these are the five, I think, are probably resonate best with this group. Um, Free Agent is an acquisition that we made in the SME accountancy firms. We bought them about a year and a half, two years ago now. Uh, completely separate company based up in Scotland, does amazing work. And very, very quickly they were able to use our public facing APIs with nothing written bespokely for them to access their customers' account details, transaction details, and suddenly make payments. So actually you can now do your tax returns within Free Agent without actually having to enter any of your bank account details from scratch. They can just suck it out of the ecosystem, both for us as a NatWest uh, bank, but also from any other participant in the open banking ecosystem as well. And suddenly, the proposition that was being provided to a customer wasn't just, you put your data in and we'll tell you what your, your returns are, but actually, don't worry about all that horrible data stuff, we'll take care of it for you. Here's a much richer ecosystem model for you. Cora, which is our chatbot, if you've ever gone to natwest.com and had a question, You'll be confronted with, uh, with IBM Watson trying to solve it for you. Um, very quickly took on our accounts and payments APIs as well. So now about 50% of the customers that come and talk to Cora are getting their questions solved in that channel rather than having to go further into a call center or into an agent. And that channel has grown almost double over the course of the pandemic with no additional cost in the, in the running of those um, APIs or systems. Rooster, which we bought at the end of last year. Rooster's a youth account system. I don't know if you guys use it, but certainly I do for my kids well before we purchased it. So it was nice to see that it was finally joining the NatWest family. Um, Rooster, with no real involvement from our API team, has been able to consume the login with Bank API, a product that, again, is a non-traditional finance product, but suddenly has allowed Rooster customers who were also NatWest customers to log in, link their NatWest account and app to their child's Rooster account, and over the course of the next few months, you'll be able to start to see your child's spending habits in your parent account. You can log in as a NatWest customer in the Rooster account using that API and that ecosystem and get a free 12-month card for your kid. My eight-year-old has one at the moment running around the shops um, spending with her debit card. It's a mildly terrifying prospect, if I'm honest, as a parent. Um, but it's nice to know that I, I understand the technology that's sitting behind it. NatWest Invest, our assets under management business, is using our public-facing payments APIs and ecosystem now to transfer funds into people's investments accounts um, with a 25% plus increase in NPS and a 160% increase in assets under management, again, with no additional cost or complexity in the operational process of that money transfer. Actually, they, they transfer more money through our APIs than almost any other industry participant at the moment. So it's uh, nice to see some internal dog food eating. And lastly, Pay It, which is a new proposition we launched 18 months ago or so, which is entirely founded on this principle of an open ecosystem. It is a a payments model allowing, allowing uh, consumers, businesses, to make payments to their customers or receive payments back from them. There's some great examples of Northern Rail companies um, avoiding having to send out checks for delayed trains and suddenly giving somebody a URL they can click on to receive their money into the bank account of their choice. 
But I think all of these are, are opportunities of millions of pounds worth of cost avoidance across our business that would never have been realized without that mindset model and shift that an open ecosystem has enabled. We've stolen um, wonderfully, I would love to say, from the model that you guys have set really well in the open source um, family and frameworks and that we've contributed to. My other hat runs our open source policy for NatWest. But we've borrowed that mindset of open source contribution into open ecosystems as well. So being really open with our meetups and forums, if you go and check out our website, you'll be able to find the next one of them. We hosted last in 250 Bishopsgate last month with a great attendance, actually, and some really interesting conversations from both our peers, but also, more importantly, from our consumers and the fintechs in the room about what they want our banking uh, industry to look like in the years to come. Fairly open blog content around what it's like to consume an API, how to get ahead, um, what's coming up next, tips and tricks. We've open sourced our SDKs to so make it easier for customers to consume these and actually sit on the other end of it. OAuth is not always the world's simplest protocol to, to wrap your head around, so trying to make that easier for people to access this ecosystem. We're moving our entire code repository within that West up into GitLab to create a mono repo approach between now and the end of this year, really empowering inner sourcing as a model for that, uh, reaching across the boundary that we talked about earlier, you know, finding out the code that almost does the job that you need it to. Um, We've got obviously a huge focus today on FDC3, which is NetWest we're hugely committed to. And I think joining these approaches together, the richness of an API ecosystem, the ability to position that onto somebody's desktop in a way that allows it to, to link into the apps and the experiences they need, I think gives us hopefully the best of both worlds. Um, and we'll start to see hopefully some of the code from NetWest appear in that proposition very soon. And lastly, we've, we're signatory to the FinTech pledge. So making it as simple as possible for new entrants to this market to come in the door, understand how to work, um, and help them sort of wrap their heads around what is not always the most, uh, most simple or understandable industry to be part of. And if you, as I said, want to go check out my words, um, bankofapis.com is where you can find our nine brands. You'll find our APIs as they sit today. We're being very open about what's coming next. Um, and we welcome you to come and join the community that sits around that as well. And lastly, the what's next. So, we have um, a significant progress so far. We expect to get nearer to the 200 APIs by the end of this year. That's many thousands when you count the nine different brands and the multiple different versions and the various different schemas that they all, all enforce. We've got two million of our customers using our APIs on a regular basis through other parties, so through the fintechs and the ecosystem, gaining value from propositions and products they wouldn't have otherwise had access to. We've got almost half a billion calls a month, I think just over that now actually and a very steady increase on that as we see go month to month. The, the growth of this ecosystem is continuing unabashed, um, and we expect with open finance that that's gonna receive another acceleration as well. What's been great actually as we've continued to scale both our calls and breadth of proposition and product and consumers is the number of queries that we get hasn't scaled massively. Actually we have through reinvesting in the documentation and reinvesting in the community, actually a pretty good approach to people being able to pick this stuff up fairly intuitively, fairly natively. We've got a number of APIs coming up around things like um, open data and insights in the second half of the year. Age verification is another one of those. Um, the sanctions API that I mentioned previously that was originally done for one of our ventures startups, a large multinational marketplace that you will probably know has also taken that on. So when you now sign up as a marketplace vendor, um, it calls that API to work out whether, whether you're an appropriate supplier for them or not. So there's been some really interesting sort of culture hacks and opportunities off the back of this that is starting to transform the way that our organization sees itself. Um, our CEO, Alison Rose, has mentioned now in her last two investor packs and briefings, APIs and ecosystems as being uh, one of our key drivers behind what we see as the growth in the years to come. So hopefully the start of a very positive relationship and one underpinned by our commitment to the open source community by contributing back both our SDKs, back code to our regulator, which we've done over the course of the last couple of years, and through FDC3, hopefully linking these two models together. But with that, I'm gonna leave you in peace um, and hand over to our next talker. <laughs>